Connie, thanks for being with us. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, when you heard what Sir Tim Hunt had to say, what was your initial reaction? My first thought was, goodness me, what is that English person doing saying these really outrageous things? I'm so embarrassed all the way in Korea, and here I am listening to these ridiculous comments being made by uh, a British man. And then I suddenly realised he was Tim Hunt, and uh, I was just really aghast. So, Connie, do you think that the amount of backlash against Sir Tim Hunt has been because of what his supporters have described as a Twitter lynch mob, or is it really a genuine reflection of gender inequality in the science community? I think women are at an end, a moment in time where they've really had enough with this kind of behaviour and this kind of poor portrayal of themselves. And I just think one of the things about social media is that they can seize it and use it for their own good. I don't think there has been a lynching mob. I think, of course, a lot of people have said it's inappropriate. I think the distractingly sexy hashtag has been really clever and funny and um, shows the breadth of the way women are about, uh, like to campaign. So. Um, the word lynch mob, I don't recognise it, to be honest. I think just people expressing the same sort of frustration as I and the other hundred people that were in the room. Uh, why, why is it appropriate in 2015 for somebody to think this is an OK way to behave? Uh, so Tim Hunt has had to step down from several positions. Uh, was that enough, in your opinion? I actually am not bothered what happens to Tim Hunt. Um, I think what is important to me is that we keep thinking about what can be done about women in science. Um, this is only a reflection of what goes on in society. I think one of the things that was also really important is that when I put that tweet out, I was very aware of the phenomena of Twitter shaming, and I thought, well, actually, I don't want this to happen to him because I think it's really horrifying when it happens. Um, I want this to be useful and be taken, taking women in science a little step further to getting the kind of equality that they need. And so I immediately started to ask his organisation that he's a fellow of, the Royal Society, which is the National Academy of Science in the UK, so what are you going to do about a fellow that says these kind of things abroad? And um, when I got a very poor response from them, I asked them again. Um, I decided to set up a petition um, because the Royal Society is the oldish National Academy of Science. It's been going since 1660 and it has never had a female president in that time. Not to have appointed a woman to head that organisation, I think, is really, really a serious omission because there are women out there Connie, that could do this. Connie, uh, the reality is, however, in general, across the world, women still are the minority in the field of science. Why are we still lagging so far behind? I think because of attitudes that exist in the lab. Um, my neighbour's daughter is a Cambridge PhD student and she was recently talked about a visit from a really senior scientist from the States to their labs in Cambridge, and the male PhD students were introduced, and she and her colleagues, the female colleagues, weren't introduced. Now, that's, that's just incredible that they can be sort of pushed to the back. Now, fortunately, the scientist who was visiting walked up to the, the young ladies and said, hello, what's your name, what are you doing? Um, and so I think they dealt with that very well. But I find it incredible that that sort of um, uh, action is still going on. So how do, how do you correct that? Well, I think, actually, what it now needs is a sort of uh, a positive... Um, I wouldn't say a positive discrimination. I think just positively thinking and about enhancing women in, in these places. So, um, for one thing one could do is let's have, like, I think most um, uh, 
Labour Party and Conservative Party and Liberal Party do. Let's have some all-women shortlists, all-women candidates to be put forward for some of these really big jobs, like heading the MRC, like heading the Wellcome Trust, like heading the Royal Society. Let's, let's not say um, we can carry on like this in a really slow way and it will, it will change, which is what I think the head of the Royal Society, Sir Paul Nurse, says. Let's say, let's do something a bit more dramatic now because the time has come. And I think the, the role model uh, that helps younger science females to, to, to aspire, they're not there still. And so really some urgent action needs to be taken. Connie St. Louis, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you.